Gary from quantlabs.net. Okay, in this particular video, I haven't done a programming video in a long time. We are just getting set up here for Windows. Um, Windows 11, that is. Just got this new laptop a few weeks ago. So I'm setting up the environment so I can do in parallel uh, scripts on my Linux box desktop. So it's on this uh, laptop and have everything all in sync and keeping the file data uh, structures and consistent instead of using the Windows one. So let me show you what I've done. Uh, this might not be useful for a lot of people, but um, just want to go over this in case you're new to this. Okay, so what I've done is I've set up a WSL Windows subsystem for Linux. So I've got one for Ubuntu. This is right here. And uh, let me pull up uh, a link here. I hope uh, it doesn't look like I have it. Yeah, so this is what I'm going to show you. So in this link here, um, what we're doing is we need to install uh, in the Visual, Studio, the Visual Studio and Visual Code, VS Code. Now, VS Code uh, is the only one that does this. Um, and... Uh, Still trying to get used to this. So for Visual Studio Code, um, we've got the uh, all the Python extensions loaded up. We've got the remote uh, WSL loaded up. So if you follow these instructions from this uh, blog post, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's fairly easy. They made uh, Visual Studio Code a lot easier now. And uh, so what I've got is I just showed you the um, the the um, let's see here. Okay, so we're gonna open recent. So you can see here, I have a, a local on my Windows, a, a local Windows interpreter for Python. And then I have a separate one for the WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux in Ubuntu. And this is the path that it's on, uh, Caustic Python VS Code Workspace, okay? So let me load up that. Uh, this is the test code. So I'll load up my uh, Ubuntu as well, which is the WSL. Okay, so here we go. So this is right here, the uh, WSL. So as I said, <clears throat> we have a path here of um, this one right here. So that's the VS Code uh, target. And on the uh, VS Code here on my Windows, um, I can run this normally. And that's the uh, Python VS Code I just showed you here within um, this environment in the WSL. So if I run Python test from uh, Windows, there's there's that. And so if I do, um, let's say just a simple cat on this script test from Windows, this is what it looks like. So if I go in and on my VS code, change the code, save it. Okay, rerun this. You'll see it's updated the code. So now when I run it, there's my latest, and that's from within Windows of my VS Code. And then this target of this file is sitting on this WSL Linux environment. So again, if I run this uh, as is uh, within the WSL Linux, it's all good. So now I can uh, port over all my scripts from my desktop, Mint, and uh, Mint and Ubuntu are pretty well compatible. Should be able to run uh, all my scripts that I have in Python on the Mint Linux and move them over to this WSL for Ubuntu and continue doing my development in VS Code. Now, as I said, you cannot do this sort of thing in Visual Studio. At least I can't find it for Python. That's the key for Python. So if you're trying to do this, it, it can work with, as far as I've been told, C++, C Sharp, but not for Python support. Um, so there's a couple of options that you could do. Um, if you install your uh, WSL 
with uh, the the graphics and all that already. So uh, what I can do is I can run Firefox from it because this is all pre-installed. I, I installed it. Uh, this is not the Windows Firefox. This is the uh, WSL Firefox from the Linux Ubuntu Firefox. So this will run, can be slow. Uh, one thing you can do here is if you go under um, your file explorer on the Windows. So this is now running a Firefox from the Linux. Okay, so um, if you come under here and the Linux is a WSL, go under Ubuntu, and then you can see all the folders uh, on your Windows Explorer for the remote WSL uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Let's see if I can find my, um, should be here. Um, oh no, I'm under home. So here's my Python here. And then there's the VS code I was showing you earlier. This guy right here. Okay, so um, you can do that. Plus the cool thing is um, I've also got, I, I've used Sublime for many years, never really needed a, an IDE or a professional editor like Visual Studio or Visual Code. Uh, but this is just as a backup. This is what I'm used to. Um, again, this is running within the Linux. So there's some really nice flexibility uh, here um, on this laptop. I'll probably replicate this on my uh, Linux or my uh, desktop, put on Windows 11 maybe. I might do that. Um, for now, I'll just keep it as is. The thing is, is why did I go from Microsoft uh, 10, let's say, to Linux and only Linux? and also mac os the big thing that i don't like about microsoft is what they do is i was very happy with windows 8.1 many years ago and just one day uh there was a process of uh porting people over to windows 10 and they did a forced update on my my system with windows 10 and it was in beta full of bugs for like 10 months and i swear to god i wouldn't go back to microsoft now was when uh windows 10 came out uh years ago so here we are back on Microsoft. Things, things seem to be a lot better. Uh, hopefully they don't do any of those stupid uh, problems of uh, forcing things upon you you don't want. And uh, right now it's it's good. And uh, we'll leave it at that. Anyways, uh, if you want to learn more tips and tricks, I'm not sure how much programming stuff I'll put out. But you can get on my email list here at quantlabs.net slash books. And then there, uh, I'll be sending out a variety of stuff, including programming, algo trading. And if you want just pure trading, we got that too. Just click off the uh, segments that you're interested in uh, once you get that email. Other than that, thanks for watching. Have a good day.